As of now, we are done with the introduction and architecture of WPF. Now, before getting started with the implementation, let's see some features of XAML which we are going to use as a designing language with WPF. So basically XAML stands for Extensible Application Markup Language. So this Extensible Application Markup Language which is name wise and looks wise is very similar to an XML file is having some wonderful feature which will make you to use this particular language with WPF. It is a simple and declarative language based on XML. So basically as I said in the introduction as well it is nothing but a XML language itself but here we are using this XML for designing the application that's why we put it extensible application markup language. It will provide you an easy way to initiate or to create the set of, I mean, set of properties controls in a hierarchical way all right. So as here we are putting the tag, so maybe some, so you will get something called a windows tag, then inside you will put a container control like grid stack panel and then inside that you will put something called button, maybe inside button you put an image and anything like that, alright. So basically what we are doing here, whatever the designing, whatever the implementation we will make, that will all be done in a hierarchical manner. So all the objects and the properties of those particular objects will be set here in a hierarchical way through XAML itself. So this XAML is used here to create the or to design the graphical user interface and this XAML file whatever the designing you are making at the end those particular designings are a valid XML file. All the XML files are not XAML but all the valid XAML files are a valid XML files alright. So Along with that, let's see some more things. XAML is just another simple and easy way to design UI elements as we know it very well now. All right. XAML is an option. All right. It's optional. It's not mandatory. Like it's not like if you want to work with WPF, you will have to go through XML or XAML. Right. But here it is the hard. Why it's called hard? Because all the wonderful features will be achieved through this XAML itself. If you don't want, you can continue using C sharp and at the runtime you can also add or remove the controls from your user interface but that will not be a great idea as you will be missing some of the wonderful features like putting the storyboarding at the uh, designing time or the 3D graphics. That's all will be missed if you will go through the particular or uh, traditional way to put the C sharp code for designing the web, uh, windows forms. The goal of XAML is to enable visual designers to create uh, user interface elements directly. All right. When I say visual designers, they are not programmers. All right. If you start designing the windows using the C sharp code, C sharp is a programming language and that will be used by a developer itself. All right. So developers will have to go for the designing task. But if you will go for the XAML, then here what you can do, you can allow any visual designer to create the windows forms for you and later any developer can start coding as we do in a normal web application as well. WPF aims to make it possible to control all visual aspects of user interface from the markup. All right means when any visual designer will be working on it. So it will be aimed like whatever is possible graphically animation wise can be achieved by this markup language called extensible application markup language. So this is why we will keep on working with the XAML while working with the WPF. So in the next video what we are going to do first we will see how to install the Visual Studio the required IDE for working with the uh, WPF and then uh, in the next from the next video after that we will start implementing the different components of WPF. That is all for this video.